today from TIAA Bankfield in Jacksonville, Florida. This is Madden NFL 21 on EA Sports. The Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Miami Dolphins. He originally opened in 1995 as Jacksonville Municipal Stadium when this franchise entered the NFL. We welcome you to Jacksonville and TIAA Bank Field. This crowd excited to see their Jaguars as both teams emerge from their tunnels a moment ago. We are just about ready for football as the Jags get set to match up with the Miami Dolphins. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. The Dolphins take the field with Tua Tungavailoa, their quarterback from Alabama, at the helm. And what I enjoyed watching this week when we had a chance to watch them at practice, the easy camaraderie that he has with his offense. A lot of respect. A lot of respect, and frankly, I thought it spilled over to the defense. All the defensive guys were coming over and teasing and joking with him. You can tell they respect the heck out of him and really want to play well for him. On play action, here's Tua. Rolling to his left. He's going to take off with it. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Now the former Washington Husky, here's Miles Gaskin, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. The Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. On first down, Tug of Iloa. Got a man open, that's Devontae Parker complete. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10, down at the 33. They'll run now with Gaskin, down at the 30 after a gain of three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run. 
but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Tua sets up to pass it. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Mike Kosicki, and it's third down. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Now they got to get to the 23 here on third. From the gun, it's Tua. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. That's a good job there creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And the opening drive for the Dolphins yields three. They were probably hoping to get him a little bit closer for a shorter field goal, but he was able to get it done from deep. Nice little tester for him to begin things, huh? I think he was open for a little bit more of a chip shot. Instead, they made him stretch it out a little bit, but he's got to feel great now that he put it through the pipes. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. Jamal Agnew now to return it. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. And their quarterback, well, everyone knows he's got height, standing at 6'6". And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking, talking about ordering dinner, ordering snacks. I was snacks. just going to say. That's, that's where I go. And they'll run it. This is James Robinson. He takes this for three to the 29. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. They run. Robinson. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Able to complete this to Chennault. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That gain on third down, good for 28. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 42-yard line. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted.
Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. The throw over the middle taken in. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Sets up the screen to Robinson. And that play goes nowhere. He's met behind the line, and a penalty flag may add insult to injury. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Shaquem Grant back deep for Miami. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. So Miami coming out for their second drive. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yep. Run what Put you your do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Here's Gaskin. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it. But a lot of it is just being actors back there, making the defense think it's going to be a pass. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. And he'll lose yardage, brought down at the 32. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Partner, one thing I was lousy at growing up, track and field. I could never anticipate the start before a race, but how about that backer? He figured it out, jumped the count, and turned it into a really nice play for his defense. Now second and 11 from the 32. Throwing now is Tungamailoa. He'll get this complete to his running back, Bowden. That'll wind up as a loss on the play, so now they're staring at a third down and 12. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. The last two plays each lose a yard. They'll try to move forward here on third and 12. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And he'll give this only to about the 38 as they stop him a few yards shy of the line to gain. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. So on fourth down, kicking it away here, Michael Pilardi. Jamal Agnew is deep to return it. Fielded at the 20. It's a 41-yard punt, but just a net of 31 following the run back. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. 
So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Now a handoff to start it out. Robinson. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Emmanuel Agba there on the stop. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. So that'll back him up five. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Back to throw. And connecting here with DJ Shark. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Right here, right here. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Completing it here to Marvin Jones. And he'll only get this to about the 35. Well short of the line to gain. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. Here's Logan Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. A 40-yard punt, one yard on the return, and it'll be Dolphin football. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. This is Gaskin on the carry, and he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Tua wants to throw it on second down. And this would complete to Will Fuller. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Three-nothing after one on EA Sports. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. 
On the handoff, it's Gaskin, and he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. No luck whatsoever there on the draw. Yeah, they're supposed to use their aggressiveness against them. That was the hope. But maybe they had too big of a meal last night. A half step slow, and he ends up running right into the meat of the defense. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Going to the air, Tugamailoa. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Here's Tua. And he comes back with one complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Tua finding Gesicki there for a Dolphin first. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds him for the first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now Tua. On the right side open is Gesicki. Three yards the gain there, second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync stayed in great communication and as he dragged across each zone you see him pointing communicating there he is and they passed him off to each defender ended up making a nice play even though it was complete call it a gain of a couple and that's going to leave him with a third and about five just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry no not at all they did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up the Dolphins on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. Looking to pass, Tua. And that is incomplete. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds, and they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. It hasn't gone particularly well for them. That's obvious. In these conditions, no points so far. They've got to get that offense on track. The question, how do they do it? It is the age-old question, isn't it? And to me, finding a way to make sure your playmakers touch the ball without it being too exotic, meaning you don't have to go deep down the field. Maybe you hit them on those short passes on the perimeter. Make sure you just turn around and hand it to your best runner and get out of the way. Don't cause any extra stress on your offense. On second down now, it's Robinson. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they've bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. First down, it's Robinson. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. 
Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. On the run, it's Robinson. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. This is Chenault on the receiving end. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 27 yards there on a very nice third down conversion. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 44-yard line. They'll set up to throw. The left side completion to Jones. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. 12 more yards there and another first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. On first down, Robinson. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. He's got his tight end, O'Shaughnessy. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 16 yards, a first down. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. First down, it's Robinson. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Tackle made there by Eric Rowe. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. <laughs> on second down, it's Robinson. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. On third down, Robinson. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. Four yards.
yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Second quarter, two minutes remain, 3 nothing. our score. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touch. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. From 10 yards out, and the Jaguars have taken the lead. Brandon, what we just saw there were two guys who were in sync. The person delivering the ball, but especially the person running the route. Tremendous job. It results in a terrific play. Aldrich Rosas on for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. Now after the touchdown, here's Rosas on to kick it away. This is Jakeem Grant. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Man, I've seen that play a couple of times already. Miami set to take over. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and 10. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Two are going to try and go quickly here. On second down, Tua. And that's complete to Lynn Bowden. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. And Wilson has it. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that'll get them the first down as they get nine yards out of that quick slant. The Dolphins moving with a sense of urgency here. Two and now on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. 
Again, they will throw it with Tungamanoa. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. That catch good for only a couple. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Two and a throw again. He gets this one complete to Bowden. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the five at the six. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. And again, it's Tunga Vailoa. Forced out to his left. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know, there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. Second and goal from inside the five. From the gun, it's Tua. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Tua fighting Devontae Parker for the touchdown there. And the Dolphins are going to jump back in front. That is a near-perfect end-of-half drive right there. And we've seen that many times from the best in the league. But do you really expect to see it done that well by a rookie? And how about the timing? Finishing it almost near the zeros, as you said, right at the end of the half. Great momentum to carry into the locker room. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. So that drive in total eight plays. And it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. To return, here's Agnew. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. to do anything foolish as they'll snap it one more time on first down. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee and that should do it for half number one. So we've hit halftime, just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a strong first half from our quarterback. His guys lead, though by only a field goal, still anybody's game, as we send it back to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half.
Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. To return, here's Agnew. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. Let's we'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. I know they'd love to take some heat off of that young quarterback, but so far, not much in the running game, and this won't help things either. A loss on that play. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. Now they couldn't get anything going there out on the right side in the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but... Obviously, the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. In your face. Out of the gun now on third down. Try to lay one up deep. He's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. It's your first drive of the second half. You're down on the scoreboard. Maybe just say to yourself, let's take a shot, see if we can shake them up. And boy, they hit that one. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. They'll run it now with Robinson. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. They'll run again here with Robinson. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play, backwards a yard. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on Earth. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. He's going to drop this underneath for Robinson. And the tackle going to be made at the 41 as they stop him a few yards short of the first. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. 
And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. First down, Tonga Bailoa. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Gesicki. A gain of six there on first. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he was unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. <laughs> Throwing now is Chugamailoa. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Two are going to throw. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started, and that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty, and before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. Pilardi now on to punt as he sends this one away. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and the Jags will have great field position to start this drive as they take over on the short side of the field. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. They always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to. And if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll run here with Robinson. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. That is caught at the seven. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. 
15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Well, it certainly doesn't matter if it's been through the air like on this play or on the ground. I don't know what's going on with this defense. In a sense, they've been AWOL on this drive so far. Three plays, three first downs given up. They've got to find the answers, and they've got to find them quick. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. Good first step there defensively, but they're still knocking on the doorstep, so maybe another run here? I think so. One of my favorite coaches you say, son, if you could darn near lay down near the end zone and get in, <laughs> give me my best power running play with my best back right now. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. It's their quarterback. A three-yard run as he kept it himself. And the Jaguars have retaken the lead. And maybe there, that was just a case of completely overlooking the guy holding the football. It certainly felt like it, didn't it? Because on my checklist, okay, as a defender, <laughs> QB's last. Running back, fullback, heck, jet sweeps nowadays. Before you even get to thinking about the quarterback might actually keep it. Rosas now to add the PAT. And that makes it 14-10. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. Now after the touchdown, here's Rosas on to kick it away. Jakeem Grant now to return. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. To a tongue of Iloa in the offense heading back out. He's hoping to channel his first half play. They had the lead at halftime, was playing well. Flipped the script here in the third quarter a little bit. I think he misses the peewee days, you know, <laughs> when you just got the orange slice yeah. at halftime, right? <laughs> and remember, weren't any real adjustments then, right? You weren't looking at some tape, right? You weren't looking at stuff off of the, the surface tablets. You just went back out and played. Right now, maybe the adjustments have caught up to him. And we'll see. Maybe he just needs a couple orange slices here for this drive. They run with Bowden. A very tough run, but for a short gain out near the 32. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, partner, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so that he can gallop through it. But in this case, he had to slow down. There was really no hole there, and he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. Tongue of Iloa to throw on second down here. And they'll run the screen with Bowden. A good job defensively to hold that to four yards, and now it's third down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. Out of the gun on third down, here's Tua. They're able to locate Wilson. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. With a quick slant, good for eight and a first. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Seconds 
setting to throw on first down is Tua. Now he's forced to a hit, and the ball is out. And the Jags grab it. And his guys are going to get the football at their own 47-yard line. And maybe that would cause by the weather, of course, the rain coming down. Charles, can you maybe, when you're carrying that football, grip it too tight in the rain? I think that you can, and it's such a delicate balance, too, because when you grip it so tight, sometimes it'll slip out from your body. You squeeze it too hard, and it'll pop out on its own. I've actually had running backs talk to me about that, that when they've tried too hard, even in perfect conditions, the ball gets away from them. They've got to find that good balance, carrying it firmly, yet at the same time under control. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive, and they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Menardrick McKinney there to make the stop. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Again, it's Robinson. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And that will be incomplete. And this is too far behind his man. He missed him. It's incomplete. Here's Logan Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Returnable for Grant. That'll go as a punt of 34 yards that time. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Tua and the rest of the Dolphin offense heading back out. He has seen the halftime lead evaporate in, in his first half play. Hasn't really carried over to the second half. We just saw a fumble, right? So he had a hiccup there. So whatever those home remedies are that you know, send them to him right now to try and get over that and get back on track. Yeah, he's trying to forget that fumble from earlier in the third quarter. We'll see if he can do it. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 22. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. That's a really nice, tough run inside. And they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Tua wants to throw it on second down. Now thrown to Parker, complete on the slant. 11 yards there, first down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. They'll give him a yard on the play, and it'll make it a second down. And 
And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Now it's second and nine. Going to the air, Tugavailoa. He'll get this complete to his running back, Bowden. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know, this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Now Tua. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Miami. Will Let's Fuller, go. Go. 40 yards. And the Dolphins have taken the lead here in the fourth. Those are the types of plays in these moments they were hoping for from this young rookie, able to put him up here in the fourth quarter. How about the kid? You just mentioned it, the fourth quarter. This is when you have to make those winning plays. That's what he just did. Doesn't ensure anything, but he certainly gave his team a heck of a chance, didn't he? Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. So that drive spanned five plays, and it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. To return, here's Agnew. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. come out throwing here to start the drive and nearly picked off there and it would have been a great time for their first pick instead it's second down I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there there weren't really any throwing lanes but the best part for him he's got second and third down to fall back on and once again they'll go from the 23 yard line on second and ten Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and ten. That's a nice job defensively to make sure everyone was accounted for because ordinarily you pick up the guys downfield and sometimes you forget about the running back. In this case, they did not and dropped him for no gain. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And a dump off here to Robinson. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. Brandon, a lot of times you'll see running backs rotate in and out of the game, whether it's completed pass, a good run, it doesn't matter. Here, not only does he stay in, but they go right back to him. And he makes another nice play. Back-to-back -back catches. Now on 
first down. He'll drop to throw it. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. This is unbelievable. Umpire threw the flag, usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Back to throw again. Connection made with Chanel. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. It's a big play, yet amazingly, because of how far they had to go, they're still looking at a second down here. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. They'll come up now on second and a yard. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Some big plays in the passing game on this drive. And here's one out of the running game. So the passing game loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 41. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. Busting through contact. Just wasn't a huge hole there for him to operate. Stopped just inside the 35-yard line. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And the Dolphins' rush gets home. Down he goes. Bernardrick McKinney muscled his way in for the sack. But nothing takes a start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. The Jaguars on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This is third down and 12. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. This one complete to the tight end, O'Shaughnessy. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. He got out of bounds. That's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play caller, grab your nerves because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. The Dolphins' offense now working their way back onto the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 11. On the ground, it's Bowden. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there. Second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Here's Tua. On the right side, open is Gesicki. 
That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. The Dolphins on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This time they face a third and two. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Hasn't been his best afternoon on the ground, far from it, but a critical third down conversion. This afternoon just got better. All right, you're exactly right. It hasn't been his best in terms of yardage, but that run there, that's the one your teammates look to you and go, okay, that's what we want from you. That's what we need. Now they have a chance to keep moving forward and a chance to win the game. Here's Tongue of Iloa on first and 10. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating the defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. From the gun, it's Tua. Now a short one to Gesicki. He'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. And it's caught by Parker. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. And that one results in 35 yards. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. And again, it's Tug of Iloa. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Lynn Bowden, the one he was looking for. That'll bring up second down. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Two and a throw again. It's complete to Parker left side. And he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. Devontae Parker, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Dolphins add on to their lead. They have to love seeing that from their young quarterback here in the fourth quarter, able to further that lead with a touchdown pass. He didn't go turtle, did he? And you know what I mean by that. I had an old coach used to say all the time, hey, when we have a lead late, don't just tuck in and try and ride it out. Go out and play and extend the lead. And that's what he did. Sanders on for the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So that drive goes eight plays. And it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. 
Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Yeah, the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Throwing here on first down. On the slant, this is Chark. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. And a good start there on first down. They've got to have this drive. No doubt about it. Down a couple of scores. They have to find a way to put it in the end zone. Chunk plays, explosive plays. That will be the key to this drive. First down, he'll drop to throw. He's got his tight end, O'Shaughnessy. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Three yards the gain there, second down. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you'll give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. This is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time's going to run off the clock. Here's a second and seven. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. He's going to let it fly. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked up by Xavier Howard. And a very good return as he takes this all the way up to the 35-yard line. They brought the house that time on the young rookie, maybe a little rattled through the pick. And you have to be prepared for a lot of pressure as a rookie quarterback because most defensive coordinators are going to test you that way. So when you see that, the ball's got to get out of your hands quickly, and that means your receivers have to understand they have to break off their routes quickly as well. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over, and a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their 35-yard line. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. midfield just a yard or two shy of the 40. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Here's Bowden. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half, to about the 39. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. And to give this time to the tailback. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. 
Give him 14 on that one and a first down. This defense, Charles, they have unraveled here in the fourth. In a sense, it's like they're being pressed, like in a basketball game, and they just can't get the ball over half court. I mean, no matter what they do, they can't get off the field. They can't slow them down. They're just going up and down the field against them. Yeah, unraveling would be a perfect word for them. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. And they'll take a knee as the clock ticks down toward 50 seconds to go. Down to an ego's Tua, and that should just about do it. Charles, in this one, I think the storyline really, the fourth quarter coming into it neck and neck, but they were able to separate, put their foot on the gas, and get the win. And since you mentioned neck and neck, I'm going to stay with a little bit of a horse racing theme. It was that close, and then really went into the gallop and finished it strong. One more horse racing theme. Go. I, just, I am glad you posted today. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we sign off from Jacksonville.